Welcome everybody to Saves Together, a podcast about playing games together, whether that means co-op or passing the controller back and forth or just playing the same game at the same time. It doesn't matter how, it only matters that it's together because... When you save together, you stay together. I'm... Grace. And I... Grace. (laughs) I'm Craig McGowan and that is my lovely esteemed co-host, Grace Novak. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on today. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining me thank you. on this, my podcast. For having me. Mine alone. That's all right. You can have it. Saves alone. Saves alone. So Sad. this is episode, oh, uh, I don't 65. remember. 65. 65. And we're doing a little bit of a weird one, but if you've followed along for the last three years of Saves Together, you know what Getting this is. Getting a little quirky over here. This is the E3 recap episode. A little strange so weird that we that us a gaming podcast would do an e3 episode i know we're not like those other podcasts we're not like other podcasts we really change it up around here we like gore so before we talk about what we saw at e3 what we're thinking about liking and maybe not liking let's talk about what we've been playing in our solo times grace what what have you been up to games wise are you still doing that thing where you play a billion games (laughs) no 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 i um no 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 i think I think no. <laughs> well, I would think no also, seeing how you said it 15 times. <laughs> so I platinumed Ratchet and Clank, and that was a great game. Thank you. Thank you. It's not that much of an accomplishment. I like, I like that you were telling me. I haven't even really looked at it, but I like that you're saying the platinum's easy. Like, yeah. I think that's cool because it's rewarding to get platinums. Yeah, right. And um, it was just, it's um, it's very attainable. And it's a really fun game, so you want to kind of do more of the gameplay even after the game's over. And it, honestly, once the game was over, I only played for like an hour or two more to get the Platinum. So it was, uh, it's a good time. I really enjoyed it. I think if you have a PS5, I've never played a Ratchet and Clank game before, and I've never cared to because the characters aren't cute, which is a good reason, and if you ask me. And they're still um, not really cute. No, I, they're not. Like, there's the photo mode. I've played a little of the game as well. There's the photo mode, and, like, every time I think, oh, this will be a cute shot of a cute, cuddly creature named Ratchet. It's not. He's got a weird face. This isn't to say I only play games if there's cute characters. That's not the case. That's my... But, you know... That's why I play Skate 3. (laughs) There's nothing that really appealed to me about this this franchise until now, because everyone was like, oh, my God, it's so amazing, so... I mean, it looks incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the... It's the first PS5 game that we are interested in that's PS5 only, I think. I mean, aside from like Astrobot. I feel like there is another game we're playing that's PS5 only. Well, technically Integrate on Final Fantasy VII is PS5 only. That's true. But um, I feel like there's another one that we looks have. very good. Actually, that's one that we, we haven't talked about since because it came out between episodes. That's true. So I also played and beat Final Fantasy VII, the Integrate, which is the Yuffie chapter. Which I also was played it. Really fun, but also I had to get used to the combat again. The combat was hard for me. I think I'm just dumb. I'm not sure. Anyway, the game looked amazing, and I love Yuffie, and it made me very excited for the next part of Final Fantasy VII remake. So they did. Uh, I I I don't even know who Yuffie is, like because I because I again I never played the first one, but I like instantly loved her. I think she's cool. Yeah. Weren't she's we really talking cute. about something where Yuffie did this character? like trope better you said she did tiny tina i didn't yeah say that. <laughs> she's got a little tiny tita vibe but like what tiny tina should be where See, it's i like don't i don't have any really i don't have any frame and of says for that. and like talks to herself and says funny stuff and then like you yeah know, she's not over the top in that way like, but it oh works my God, shut up yeah. she just seems like a cute kid who like makes Isn't jokes a kid yeah how old well, is she she is she's 16 oh well, but i think she plays that part well though. Is but what still, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, but she's saying she's not a kid because a 16 year old wouldn't say they were a kid, but a kid to us. Hey, if you're 16 and you're listening to this, I got one thing to tell you. You're a kid. You're a kid. You are a child, and that's okay. No. You should don't, play. Let, don't let them just say that. You can only that. play T for teen and less games. Don't play any M rated games. <laughs> yeah, you You'll would get never. get scared. You would never. I when still was remember. your first um, M rated game? I was just about to tell that I story. You were. Because I saw it, I could. Because, like I said, I can th- I can see your thoughts. No, you can't. I'm looking so, at the back of you. I can see them happening. Like in the world ends with you. A little bit, I think. I was living in the south. <laughs> well, I was this, living in the south. I had this neighbor, and um, she was my age. You say you were was, living in the south as if like you weren't born there and you're not from there. Because I don't consider where I, I know, was born still... in the south, but I was living in the south for like a year or two, which is South Virginia. That's where not I'm a place. from is from the D.C. area. 
DJ Bedroom area, Nova. And you know, that's not really the South to me. It's not really the South you're, to anyone You're correct, there. but it's just funny because it was like when I was <laughs> living in the South, like you, that you were living where you're from. Anyway, so I was living there and I had this neighbor and she, um, she was a little bit on the wild side, or at least that's what I thought when I was younger. I don't know any better. I was only like 11, 10 or 11. And I went over to her house and um, we played, she had Grand Theft Auto. I don't know which one it was. I think it was. Mm. How old was she? I mean, if I was like 11 or 10, she was probably about 10 or 11 as well. So why did she have grandson? Like, did her, like I said, she was a little bit it? on the on the wild But how did side? she convince her kid or her, her mom or dad or somebody to get it? I don't think they cared, Craig. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so I was over there and we were playing it and she started like chainsawing people on the beach and I was really scared. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think I'm allowed to play this game. I was one of those kids that was like really wanted to follow all the rules and had a, an extremely guilty conscience. I don't think I told my parents because I don't think they would have cared. But I mean, well, maybe they would have. My mother probably would have cared. I didn't tell her. So <laughs> that was the, I think, one of the first mature games I ever played. Grand Theft Auto seems to be a lot of kids's. I think because yeah. it's such a, they don't make younger games like that. Not obviously right. with the guns and violence, but like especially GTA three or Vice City when when we were kids, it was like adults have this whole other genre that you can't even partake in. Yeah, you know, right. like it open felt like, world. It felt like porn a little bit. Yeah. It felt as forbidden as porn to me. Yeah, it really did. Or unknown as porn, you know. So I don't know. It's pretty funny. What what about you? What was yours? My cousin showed me Mortal Kombat when I was like way too young, but it that didn't even register that that was like M rated. It was just like I didn't even know what was going on, but it's Quake 2 or Metal Gear, one of those. When, when, how old were you? Uh, Quake 2 came out in 96, 97, and I got it pretty much right away because I was playing the demo on AOL. Uh, they had like a games, I don't think they even had a website. They had like a games segment because you would use AOL keywords. Does this register to you at all or did you miss that? Honestly, the only thing I remember about AOL is... My I would AOL chat my sister and she had this tiger emoji. I don't know if it was like a pop up, but it would make a sound every time she te- te- chatted to me. And I was really impressed and I thought that was really cool. That is cool. And that's that. I, I think that's my entire experience with AOL was like getting to AOL chat my sister. I was too young to like talk to strangers or do anything else. I was the right age and it fucked me up. Clearly. Uh, but yeah, so I convinced my parents somehow to buy me Quake 2 at the age of seven or eight. You, um, you probably didn't tell them what was in it. No, I did not. And I, I made the mistake with Metal Gear, where I played it at my buddy's house on PlayStation, and then it came to PC. And I was very excited, because we only had the demo, actually, of Metal Gear. And I was like very excited to finally play the full game. And I would read the walkthrough over and over and over again, because <laughs> I was a kid. And I knew everything. I had a notebook where I took notes on what to do when I finally got the game. <laughs> But I made the mistake of reading the notes to my mom because I was so excited. And I, I read about the torture scene out loud. And she said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, there's turn. torture in this game. No, you, you can't have it. That's so and that's I blew actually it, so funny. And that's how it took me like 10 more years to play Metal Gear. <laughs> Did do you think like most kids who had games had like a little notebook? Because I had a little notebook. I would this was before smartphones obviously so like now I would just put it on my notes on my phone but I would bring a notebook with me for vacations because I would replay Harvest Moon a lot and I would have guides printed out in small text on this little notebook and I would paste them in there about how to marry each boy so I could so I could Frankly, bring that information with me and we were like you know at the beach for a week I needed to know it how could I look it up no internet you know so right. I had to had my little notebook Frankly I Still wish I I, I kind of want maybe I'll start doing that. You you do your bujo and I'll do my gaijo. Game journal. <laughs> I was like, what? Um, because when I was I playing Death notes. Stranding two years ago or whenever that was, I ended up drawing a physical map of where I was connecting things and mm-hmm. how I was connecting and the routes I was gonna take to get places, and it was so fun. Like, yeah, some people do like video game journals, and I I'm think that's really cool. Look into that. I, I, I'm. I don't know why this just like clicked with me. I'm going to totally look into that. I think it'd be fun. And it's also like in some ways, uh, it, like I said, a journal that you can look back on like, oh, like, remember when I played this game? Right. These are my notes for it or something. But yeah, I really loved my little and I didn't just have um, Harvest Moon. I also was very into battle 
Mega Man Battle Network. I play. I had all the GBA games and I played them quite a bit. And I had all the like codes to enter in. So there's like a little shop where you enter codes into this like little machine and you got extra cards. And I was like, I had had all the codes so I can put them in and get my cards. Dude, I miss Mega Man Battle Network. Those games are so good. Are you gonna get Chris Tails? <sighs> Yes, I am going to get Chris Tales. I'm excited about that. And that's a great segue into E3, I No, believe. hold on. We didn't wrap up what you've been playing, and we didn't even talk about what I've been playing. Well, screw you then. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I just started, after Ratchet & Clank, I just started Chicory, which is on the PC. I wanted to use it on the PC because it's like painting, and it's super cute, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's like a very chillax game that I think anyone could enjoy. And it seems like it has like an interesting theme. So that's been fun. And then we I just impulse bought this morning Cozy Grove on the Switch, which is a fascinating game because as we discovered this morning, it's based off a real-time clock. So you can't do everything in one day, very similar to Animal Crossing. And apparently many people are upset by this. Even Sounds though this is part of me. the cell. Yeah, yeah. And to us, it's like, hell yeah, man. I only want to play a game for an hour a day anyway. So I, I did my little... My little dailies for the day, and I think it's fun. It doesn't run super well on the Switch. I'm not I sure know, how I'm, it runs on the PS4. I'm kind of, like, shocked because... Honestly, I'm not. I feel like with indies, like, you yeah, know... Yeah, they just don't get optimized, right? It, like, right. they don't have the I don't, time I don't. I don't know, but I do, I do know that it's a gamble when you're getting a game on a Switch these days. But at the same time, I want the portability. Like, I, you really can't beat, and we're going to be, you know, like, it's vacations coming up. And we're going to be out of the house for a couple weekends. And it's like, well, what if I want to do my Cozy Grove? I don't have a PC with me on my PS4. I got my Switch, though. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing that beats that. You you almost ignore it just because of that function. If only there was some sort of professional Switch. Pro, Switch. Right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Hmm. One day, maybe. Not not today. Not during E3 not, not 2021. E3. That's not a spoiler for what we're about to talk about because they just didn't mention anything. Um, What have you been playing recently? Um, Did we talk about Biomutant? I don't think we ever did. I don't think we did. Finally, I pre-ordered that game four years ago or something, and it's finally out, and it seems okay. <laughs> I've also been playing. <laughs> I've also been playing Mario Golf. Mm, Mario Golf. Um, I like it so far. I'm not that far in, so I haven't made a full judgment. I think it's annoying to in the golf adventure to have to run around the town because it's not very fun to move around. It's Why can't you have a, like a little golf cart or something? I know. Everybody's golf has golf carts and golf cars and golf planes. Mm, you got it. Wow, they have golf planes and everybody's golf. Um, everybody's golf so far I like better, except that Mario Golf has the... In the trailer, like, the golf courses get crazier. Mm -hmm. And it does have this mode called cross-country golf where it's just an open world and you can do any of the holes in any order. And so you, when you start, you can aim anywhere and go that way. To go do that hole, and and so you like have to make a plan Open of how you're going to get all nine holes or whatever. I think that's actually really cool, uh, like a unique take on golf. The golfing is relatively easy in quotes. There's still like a little depth to it with spin and top spin and everything. But I I like it a lot. But I think at the moment, still everybody's golf is like more fun. Uh, not more fun, but I just like it better. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to play the hell out of this game because, like you just said, it's on Switch. So. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing it while we're Seems like good, a good summer game, you know. Seems very chill and appropriate for the weather. And that's kind of it. I mean, Ratchet and Clank and Final Fantasy, but we talked Phoenix about Wright, those. Phoenix Wright, you're still playing oh, Phoenix Wright. Oh, Phoenix Wright, I'm slowly playing through and loving it. Mm -hmm. um, we're, I'm very excited for the Sherlock Holmes game. Yeah. That's going to be great. That's at the end of this month in July, right? I can't remember, but yeah, sure. it sounds right. <sighs> All right, so... That's what we've been playing now, but let's talk about what we're going to be playing in the future with what we saw at E3. E3 2021 has come and gone, but also we're still in the middle of it because EA, Are we? EA's thing is in July. PlayStation didn't do nothing. They never do now these days right yeah but They're i think officially... they'll do something at gamescom maybe in august but so the summer game season is still upon us but but e3 2021 has wrapped up mm -hmm. um so we're going to talk about what we saw what we liked uh first we'll start with solo or or just stuff that like isn't necessarily co-op and then we'll wrap up with all the co-op stuff that we saw mm -hmm. and it's not going to be everything probably because 
There was a lot. Yeah, it'll just be the notable things or things that we feel are worth highlighting. First overall impression of E3, uh, way too much nothing. So like you you tune in to Coke Primetime or Cock Prime, whatever that company is called. <laughs> okay. And it's just them talking to the camera. Right. Same with uh, Take Two. It was nothing. And like... Don't advertise these things. I think what E3, ESA proper, the people that put on E3 should have done is like really made it clear what was like a talk, like a TED talk, you know, because it's fine to make content like that. Like GDC has a ton of things like that, like postmortems on games. Mm -hmm. But at this point, what E3 means to people is game announcements. What E3 means to me. Yeah. Trailers. (laughs) So like by even having it on the same list as Nintendo and Xbox, it makes it seem like it's a similar thing, right? Right. Um, there's also a lot of a lot of conferences that weren't even part of E3, but they just happen at the same time, so we will talk about those. Like the Summer Games Fest is <laughs> the not E3, E3. Mm-hmm. Um, but this year was way more of a mess. Last year, Jeff Grubb was calling it the Summer Games mess. This year, I think it was even worse. Like, I didn't, I wasn't that confused last year. This year, I was so lost. Like, I was keeping a calendar updated with when these things were, and I was wrong half the time. And (laughs) why would I have put that on there wrong? You know, like, I think stuff was moving around and changing, and I don't know. Even, like, tuning in the the Game Awards, uh, the E3, not the Game Awards, that's a whole different thing. (laughs) The E3 award show at the end of the show was, like, tune in at 7.45 or whatever, and it didn't start till 8. And it was like, then don't advertise it starts then. It's fine if it's not going to start then, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyways, let's um, talk about the good stuff, the games we saw. Do you want to open with the whole... Do you have it sorted out by by um, event or oh, just kind of... No. Okay. With the amount of just showcase shows. So the Wholesome Direct had like 75 games in the Future Game Show and the PC Gaming Show. They all are just trailer after trailer after trailer. Oh, that's which, part of the problem as which well. Which I love. There's just too much. But there's so... It's too much. You it just used to be I would watch like three things and that would be it. And yeah. I would pay attention to... I would just watch Xbox, Sony, and Nintendo. And now it's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I think the thing I look forward to most is always just the Nintendo Direct. Because mm-hmm. um, I know what to expect. And that's that's that. But yeah, do you want me to start with one of mine... I want to so, go back and forth? Yeah, or? are you going to go, you, what, your top five? Tell me a game that you saw that you were very excited about. One of the games I knew about before E3 that I was already excited about, but now we got some more gameplay trailer, was uh, Tales of Arise, which I've played almost every Tales game. I think all the major ones. And this one looks like they've really upgraded a lot of the combat, and the environments look great, and the character designs look great so i'm I'm really excited for this and we've seen some trailers before but it was cool to see a little more gameplay so i think, I think this one comes looks, out in september of this year which is cool that game looks crazy because i've watched you play the tales trails tales 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 i've watched you play the tales games we even tried to play tales of uh vesperia vesperia yeah <laughs> uh for this for this podcast and it didn't really work out that well this one's not co-op right tales of arise I doubt it. Yeah, okay. that that was that, that was, was like kind a of a weird uh, situation. Like it's very it was it, it I think it was almost like a little bit of a gimmick for that particular game because I remember mm-hmm. it was a big deal on the Xbox 360 at the time for it to be co-op. So it, I think it was fun back then. I don't know. It just didn't seem too fun to try it now. But I think part of it was just because it's hard to sit there and enjoy a story in co-op like that when it's so it's slow. I mean, it's a JRPG and there's so much. Right. Yeah. And you can't could play the entire time. You know what I mean? Just the combat is when you're playing. Yeah. But this one looks incredible. Yeah. Arise is like visually, I just want to look at it. So I'm kind of excited to see you play that one. Okay. For me, one of my most anticipated games that they showed just a little tease of last year. I'm pretty sure it was last year at E3. Shredders from the Xbox show. Uh, it looks like a a snowboarding simulator a little less arcadey than some other stuff and i don't know i really like extreme sports games i really like snowboarding games this one looks very fun the it's gotten good style in the like logo and and production you know wrapper Mm -hmm. so i'm hoping that that translates into the game sometimes a game can be really good but just have like a stagnant like it just doesn't have any like style so it's like well this is fun but I wish it was a little more. 
Hell gusto. And I feel if you're gonna keep making, I mean, to me these all these games always like kind of look the same as far as gameplay. So if you're gonna no, make a different. snowboard game, then you have to change it up a little bit at least. That was my problem with I didn't talk about this. I don't think Carve snowboarding just came out for the Oculus Quest, and I got that. I was so excited because it's one of the guys who made 1080 snowboarding, and there's just like it's fine, uh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it made me sick because it's VR. Yeah, but that can be solved but by just staying in just VR for. A but it a just week has like no straight. It just didn't really have that much style. The music was boring that you could unlock that I found. I don't know. It's missing. It's just missing that added layer to make me like feel like yeah. Right. Uh, but this one, this game might have it, and even if it doesn't, it looks good. It looks smooth. The tricks look nice. I'm excited. Maybe you'll be on Game Pass. I'm gonna buy it no matter what. I, like well, I would probably if it's physical, especially I'm gonna buy it just for my collection's sake of extreme sports stuff i i this game garden story is another one i'm looking forward to and i think it i mean we've known about this one before e3 but it got its release date i believe recently i'm trying to remember when that's the one where you're a little grape right yeah and it looks really cute guy. it's by picogram on twitter and it's like a little like a simulate like a life simulation walking around town helping the other fruits i don't know it just looks really cute and is everybody a simple. fruit in the game i uh, no. i'm looking at the twitter banner now and there's a frog so oh uh-oh. not the case you think frogs eat grapes um i bet they would well actually i don't know are, do frogs eat fruit i, I think they, they do eat bugs and bugs are like fruit that fly I don't think, uh, so I was looking for the release date. I don't think they have an official release date, but it is going to be uh, August. No, sorry, 2021. It's going to be this year at some point. I'm just, I'm excited for this one because it looks really adorable. I mean, that's that. It's like a Stardew Valley, right? Kind of. I I think so. Yeah. yeah. Like you have like little requests that you there help are, the little townspeople. There's a lot of these. There games. are 7 million of those games and it's good. Makes sense see. because of how crazy animal crossing took the world by storm last year brought in a bun bunch of people that have never played games before and now it feels like there's this whole subsection of of gaming people that are new to games and want just more animal crossing or stardew valley and so there's being games being like made for this purpose that's kind of what that wholesome direct was all about right i mean that's their whole thing is like these are and now it's sort of expanded know. to be more like just just indie games in general, which is good. But not violent indie games. It's, it's wholesome games specifically. There's not a single one in there that's like... Right, right. Know, non cool. Non-violent indie games. I'm sure there's one or two in there that is violent. Like, it, Going Under might have been from there. I feel like they, and which is a good thing, did, you know, expanded on what whatever wholesome is, and it's more just like, just another indie game direct. Because I, right. I feel like, you know, violence, whatever, it's fine, you know? But we want to see more indie games in general. It's just good to see games that are a little bit more... Yeah, like yeah. different from what's usually made. Totally. But now at this point, there's so many of them. That is the norm. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. But there, there's a lot out there to to see and love when it comes to indie games. There's so much good stuff. Chicory, check out Chicory. <laughs> um, and next game is Riders Republic, which we've already also known about. I know, but it was finally good this to one. see. This is the the snowboarding on dirt. Another snowboarding game? <laughs> uh, BMX downhill mountain biking from Ubisoft. It's the Steep Team. Okay. That's their next game. Was this on the Ubisoft show? Yeah. Okay. I think this looks incredible and I cannot wait. Um, it looks... I really don't understand how the snowboards are propelling. They just are like going. I don't know what the propulsion system is. It seems like you can just go, which doesn't make any sense. But Gravity, you know what? bro. That's the propulsion system. But no, no, but it's, they're on flat land. Oh. Well, they're just I like go. They're just like... Magic. Yeah, right. All all I would need, like lore wise, would just be like a little. Well, maybe jet engine, be maybe you'll you know? learn when you play the game. Why? I don't think they care. I think it's just like <laughs> this is fun, so we're doing it, which Fair I enough. agree with. Um, I'm probably gonna buy the very expensive special edition, whatever, to get the BMX DLC, which I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. But I'm an idiot, so I'm gonna buy it. I don't think you're an idiot. You're Thank just you. a lover of extreme sports games. They're fun. Steep was great. We once, all have And then once Steep added grinding, which this has grinding front and center in the trailer, which is like, and it sounds probably crazy, but it'd be like putting, it'd be like making the Harvest Moon game and like you don't have to water your crops or something. It's like, what? Bullshit. That's that's like half the sport, you know? <laughs> right, um, right. I don't know. This has jet, jet engine backpacks and parachutes and wingsuits and I can't wait. That sounds fun. 
if you're into that. I am. <laughs> I uh, This game, I, I think I saw first at E3 is Death's Door, or maybe not. Like It's a little crow game when you're a crow with a sword, and it looks like a roguelike a little bit, or maybe more of an adventure game, but it's... I, I like the design of the main character being just like this little little crow and you're fighting bosses and it looks fun. Top down kind of, I don't want to say Hades style, but, you know, coming off of Hades, like more stuff like that. Fast paced action is, is always fun. Is that a Devolver joint? It is. It is. So I think they showed this at the Devolver digital conference. Let's talk about that real quick. I love to talk about that every year. I this, think I mostly ignored it when we watched it. This year, it has really just run its course. It wasn't even offensively bad, to, like it usually is. Not offensive, like, oh, I'm offended, but like, wow, I can't believe you guys think this is cool. This year, it's just like, oh my god, you're still, what the heck? Like, they had a lot of chili dogs. You know, I was like wondering that if that was a Sonic, was that a Sonic reference? Maybe, I guess, yeah. <laughs> now, it does seem like they're having fun making it. Did. It, it did right? look like they're, they're having make, fun. They're making it and they're having fun, so that's fine. I don't want to yuck their yum. I just think that the characters... I hate that phrase so I much. I love yes. it for sexual stuff. I love it for just video game stuff that you like. I love it. But yeah, I just don't really get like, why are all these characters just yelling at each other all the time? I don't... What's... Do, is that still interesting to people? I don't know. Not interesting to me. Not me either. And this year, limited run games, I think, had a funnier press conference. Last, Edited the last by two Rocco years, Bodie of uh, Mega64. Right, which I think <laughs> was the missing ingredient. Because what they <laughs> yeah. were trying to do... The other years was like, yeah, I get it. It's they just were not clearly funny. trying to get to that that vibe, but yeah. I think uh, Mega sixty four really helped bring it over the edge. Yeah, and it was good. I, I I laughed. I laughed quite a bit. So good for them. Funniest show of the of the year for sure. Which is usually not many options. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Death Store. I yeah. think that comes out on July twentieth too. So it's not too far. So a lot I'm, of stuff I'm excited. coming out. Yeah, I feel like the back half of this year. Is ending up pretty stacked. July for sure. Yeah. July also has Skyward Sword, and I know right. like there's some hashtag haters out there, but I'm a huge Skyward Sword fan. I can't so wait to play that. I got the amiibo. I don't even care. I'm ready. I'm excited to try the stick control too. Like I think I'm gonna keep using the the motion control because I really liked it on the Wii, and I know the Joy Cons are are better. So are they better though? Because they don't have the tracker, so I feel like it would get lost in. Well, the... I guess we'll find out. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We could play them side by side, there like with go. the Wii one See that we have. See who wins in... first, who beats it first. Well, no, I don't. I, actually, we could, yeah, wait. Uh, That's a, it's speed a speedrun race. race. Uh huh. Third for me, Slime Rancher 2. Oh, yeah, that's a definitely, Dude. that's for me too. I'm very excited for Dude. Slime Rancher 2. I loved the first one. They added so much stuff to it also, like, I don't even know if it was additions, but there's just so much in that game. Yeah, and it's so, like, expect. cute and... Uh, you just you can't if you get addicted to like all the slimes and all all and the, the noises are good. They mm -hmm. got real good satisfying sound effects. The boop, 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 they know. really do. They really nailed that. Uh, so very excited for that one. I think that was at the Xbox. Yeah, I was show. surprised to see that out of the Xbox one too. It was that's like a, the a stuff nice that's surprise. usually you know my my I love Xbox. I love the show they put on. They make a lot of games that I like, but usually it's like serious doom and gloom. Right, right. And this year they had a good. Mix. A couple of good, yeah, changes up is... What's three for you? Or fourth or whatever. Uh, Fourth for me is the new Suikoden game, which is Aiden Chronicles. Yeah. And I they showed a new trailer, and it looks amazing. I'm really excited. I loved the first two. I played Suikoden 1 and 2. I think it was on... I had, like, I got the digital games on the PSN for on my PS3. And I was obsessed because it was so cool to be able to try to recruit a hundred over like a hundred characters and they all had like different ways of recruiting them and different things they could do so those games are great so i'm really this is like the spiritual successor to the sweet in games so that's looks really good i that also looks like just like tales of a rise i'm excited to watch that one get played i might even play that that I one think seems it's worth be, trying because it's got they're not hard the thing is all it's kind of pokemon ish right yeah getting, exactly getting exactly guys. And you build up your little like fortress of all your guys and they're all hanging out there and you can you have a party of I think it's six. Um, it's great. OK, at the Nintendo show, I liked a lot of the stuff in Nintendo. Also, this it was kind of hard to do a top five because there was it wasn't hard, but there's a lot of stuff I liked about equally, you know, whereas mm -hmm. the two extreme sports games. Hell yeah. Slime Rancher, obvious. But then this one kind of a weird pick, but like, I don't know. I'm excited about this and it's a weird one. Cruisin'. There's a new Cruisin' game. Cruisin' 
World, I think. Th- th- does it have a title or is it just Cruisin'? Was I don't this, know. This was on a Nintendo? I don't remember yeah. this. Uh, Cruisin' is the arcade series where you race cars over crazy. It's like super arcadey racing. Mm-hmm. Like the same company makes super bikes too, which I love. Uh, just like cars doing huge jumps on crazy. Like, you know, you're racing. I think some you can like ride animals as your car you know like it does not take anything oh, seriously is this one where you're on a unicorn there's a unicorn i think in this and, and yeah you just, i remember that ridiculous racing i'm so excited i want to do that it looks fun it, it looks look great fun. i don't really have i don't know if it's gonna be fun i think if the arcade Hopefully. one is so fun this one i don't have to pay a dollar each time so hell yeah uh for the nintendo one for me i think what stood out the most was uh shin megami tensei 5 mm, that which we finally crazy. got to see like legit gameplay for and it looks awesome i'm really excited I, i'm probably gonna play that actually i've never beaten an smt game proper you know Dude. we don't count the persona games right. in this household and most do not <laughs> but i've tried and i and i'm ready i'm ready to take it on again i just hope it's challenge. a little less hard it's fine that it's challenging yeah but like i tried four and i really couldn't it was just like so demoralizingly hard <laughs> And yeah, I don't even yeah. think it's that hard. It's not like Dark Souls hard where no, it's like it's you not. can get good. It's just like, wait, it's this just is kind just of annoyingly kind of annoying. Hard. Yeah. Um, so but I, I'm excited to try this. I already pre-ordered the um the, the special edition sold out really fast, but I didn't really want all that stuff. But I thought it was cool that they had you a got little that one? um No, I didn't. Oh, I'm okay. saying I got I did pre order the steelbook launch edition. Cool. Because I want I really want the steelbook, but I but I thought it was interesting that the special edition came with like a what do they call these bags that are like across your chest? Oh, a sling bag? Yeah, it yeah. came with a sling bag that had a cute little um, Jack Frost mm. guy on it. And I was like, this is... It, it was actually the kind of um, like game merch where it's not obnoxiously be part of the game, so you could just wear it out. You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's nice. Something wearable. But I didn't need to spend $130 or whatever that was just for that. So, right. But I'm excited. I'm excited for that game. Uh, speaking of the Steelbook, I got a question. If anyone out there is listening and you're a Steelbook collector... A steelbook connoisseur. Connoisseur. <laughs> Can you stack steelbooks? Can you put them together and will they not scrape each other up? Something about the material feels like if two steelbooks are touching, they'll scrape each other. I don't know if that's true at all, and I don't want to find out because You don't want I to only, find out. I only get no, I mean like I don't want to do it myself to figure it out. Yeah. Because I only get steelbooks of stuff I really like, so I don't want to damage it. Like the Death Stranding steelbook. I love that cover for some reason. We just got some Ghibli steelbooks of like the movies we like, Kiki's and um, <laughs> Whisper of the Heart, Whisper of the Heart. Um, and like, I'm gonna, I want to put them all together on a, like a shelf, but if they touch, it feels like they're gonna scrape. I don't know why that is. I'm just insane. But on Reddit, someone says they don't think it would hurt anything. Okay, thank you. But Reddit. it depends on how many. But I want to hear from you, I the hear listener, from the people. who's an expert at this, because yes. I'm scared. I don't trust redditors. I don't trust them either, but I still trust them. And my last game is Elden Ring. Not because I was one of those people that was like super hype about you know, it. You weren't crying in the club I wasn't, about it. Yeah, I wasn't like waiting for it to come like, man, George R. R. Martin can't finish a book or a game. Mm, but burn. when I saw the trailer, I was like, wait a minute. I'm into this. You know, like that's the sign of a good. Looked if it's like a thing Dark you don't Souls. care about. Yeah, but I do like Dark Souls. I like Bloodborne. I like Demon's Souls. So it's not that surprising, I guess. But mm-hmm. I watched it. I said, oh, shit, actually. I mean, yeah, like the monster designs all look sick. Like, yeah. I, I, I'll probably give it a shot. I played a little bit of Dark Souls 1 and a little bit of Dark Souls 2, and I never beat them. But I think it'd be fun to at least try. We also played Bloodborne. A little bit of Bloodborne. Yeah. Didn't beat it. Hey, you know, it's not about the the goal. It's about the journey along the way, That's right? the thing is those games are so fun to play that right. I think it's okay to stop playing that one. It is, though, like... And encouragement to want to see like every crazy monster, you know. Mm-hmm. And I thought this trailer really showed off some some cool guys. I, I liked the uh, the the dragon with four separate wings. I thought that was sick. I like the guy whose arms have arms. Remember that guy? No, but his that sounds arms, cool. Has arms coming out of his arms. <laughs> so um, many arms. And then there's the weird pot guy. He's just a gross uh, just, looking yes, pot. A little a little pot baby. Um. You can't I can't not love the pop baby. This game visually, and maybe it's the fidelity of games getting better or something, but uh, Bloodborne, everything sort of bleeds together. Like the, the the enemies and the character sort of just blend into the world and not like terribly, like it's totally f- playable. I'm not, you know, this is just like a weird visual complaint, but like I can't separate 
the creature design. In this one, it seems like the things are obvious. To me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to me where it's just like, I don't know, it's just a mess of stuff happening. Right. And right. this one in the trailer at least looked like, oh, you are fighting this guy with this sword. Yeah. You know? Cool. That's, that's like our top fives of the show. Overall, what would, do you have like, what, did you like the show or the whole, um, the whole thing? No. No? I think I just felt overwhelmed mm-hmm. by information. And I miss back when it was a little more contained, when yeah. it felt like there was less I had to pay attention to. I like have ADHD, and so it's hard for me to like retain all that right. when it's just coming at me in huge amounts. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why it's good. Like we talk about our top fives, and I try to like write down on the calendar, especially when there's a release. It's always good to have a release date for a game for me because I won't forget about it because I'll put it on a calendar. And then at least when it comes out, like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this, you know? Right. But I, uh, yeah, you know, I, I was kind of expecting the Switch Pro, not because of the rumors, just because I, I want one. Right. I want something that performs a little better. So I hope that's something they pull out later this year. Apparently, somebody, like, looked into it, and historically, Nintendo does not announce the console refresh or even new consoles at E3 in, like, August Kind of for some reason they announced like this the DSI and the the 3DS XL Pro or whatever they called that one mm-hmm. you know so I'm not like saying this is definitely happening but okay there's like this precedent. is Craig making the prediction right now welcome to Switch Prediction Zone ugh I don't know. ugh the people that like make <laughs> content based entirely on rumors that's right. crazy to me um on my show the rundown. Which then I think I had to change to the lowdown, or uh, maybe the other way around. I don't remember. That's how important the show was to me. Mm. I tried to wrap up the game, the day's gaming news, and I did have a speculation zone. I mean, I think that's fun. I just think some people, especially when it comes to Nintendo, are like a little obsessive. It's yeah. like you need to relax. Oh, yeah. You need to just pull yourself. Well, back. in 1995, <laughs> this guy said this, which means exactly. it's been the 30th year anniversary. It's like of that. people trying to predict the weather. It's like you yeah. know that's how they predict the weather is based on what happened last year and the year before that. It's and like, at this, this point, isn't these, how games work. <laughs> these companies must be seeing that and going, actually, let's not announce it. No, let's no, screw no, them no. over. So I they think don't... that's the opposite. They'll probably they probably want to very badly. I don't know. It, no, because I feel. <laughs> Why wouldn't they want to see the Bloomberg sooner? report coming out that it's definitely happening? And then they would go, well, actually, fuck you, Bloomberg. You don't get to profit off us and then not do it. So then Bloomberg looks bad. I mean, maybe. I don't think they think that hard about I it. I think they do. I think they're. they're I think they I think, care a little more about like what their fans think rather think than trying to screw Bloomberg. Meetings over. for hours about how do we how do we get back at, at Bloomberg for what they did? <laughs> uh, can I real quick talk about the Xbox showcase and another showcase? Mm hmm. The Future of Play Showcase was a, kind of like a Toonami vibe, and it, uh, it didn't really work for me except for one segment of the Virtuoso Neo Media publisher, or maybe they're a developer, I wasn't totally clear. There were three games that all looked sick. They all had like Sega Blue Skies, uh, Bravery Network Online, Badminton, and this wipeouty looking thing. I don't remember the names of them, but you go look up Virtuoso Neo Media because they make very Craig games. And then the Xbox showcase, the flight simulator announcement is coming to Xbox this summer. Um, very excited about that. I've been waiting to play it. My PC couldn't handle it. So I'm excited for that. The Halo multiplayer trailer. Grace, did you ever play Halo multiplayer? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I didn't. Well, I did. I played a lot of it, actually. But I, did, it wasn't, my, I wasn't a Halo guy. Mm-hmm. This Halo multiplayer trailer got me hyped for Halo multiplayer, so I think that's a good sign. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I'm definitely going to get my ass kicked. I'm not going to be good, but if you took a thing I didn't like and made me excited about it, you probably have a good thing going. Right. And then lastly, um, hey, they got a mini fridge shaped like an Xbox Series X. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. That's pretty sick. And they I just really, want to point uh... out, I want to get it on the record out there in the world. Grace was the one who said we should buy it, not me. So wow. when we buy it... Is it the size of the Xbox? No, it's going to be the size of a mini fridge. Well, there's a different sizes of mini fridges out it's gonna there. It's going to be mini fridges. I don't fridge. know if you know if that. If you look at the... the mini the, fridge is not one size the fits render, all. The it, render, it fits about two stacks of cans. So it's not that big. How many cans, like, wide? Very, a few. I don't know. Not many. Two. It seems small. Two by two, you're saying. Perhaps. Maybe. Four cans. With one diagonal can, <laughs> or one horizontal can on top of the top one. I see. Anyways, I see. it's going to be small-ish, but still big. 
I can't wait. It's so that's the right type of stupid. When I talk about liking things that are dumb, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you made a mini fridge. Okay, sure. Right, right. I know. I think it's I think it's funny. Hey, so this is a co-op podcast. E3 had some co-op games. Let's run through them real quick and give our impressions. Okay, so when we run down these co-op games, we might... I kind of want to discuss if you think we'll play it or not. Yeah. Like a quick little yes or no, you know. Yeah, or at <clears> least maybe like a... Yeah, yeah, okay. Like obviously <laughs> any of these are up for an episode because uh-huh. they're co-op. And yeah. maybe someday we'll automatically be somehow interested in Far Cry 6. But maybe we'll we'll just say yes if we're leaning towards it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Far Cry Six is one of the no. one of the big ones. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I played some of five. I've and... never played a Far Cry co op game. I think I played the Blood one. Really? <laughs> what was the really goofy Blood one? Dragon. Yeah, I think it was free on something at some point, and I played some of it, and it was fine. But I wasn't super. I wasn't super into that. All of those Ubisoft games, Wildlands, uh, Ghost Recon, or whatever. Um, like all the multiplayer co-op games? Like they're all sort of like, yeah. I guess it's just the two. Ghost Recon and Far Cry 6, 5, 4, 3. Two, one. Two. Two and one are, one is crazy. Uh, sorry, two is crazy. It had that really good fire. You remember this? No. You could start fires and it would like spread across the grass. And this was PS3. Is that when, the one where you burned down the weed farm? No, I think that's like three or four. <laughs> like when they started getting, the, the games are good. They're just like, I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's just not interesting to me. And I'm not a big first person shooter fan in the first place. So let's yeah. let's be real. Right. Uh so there won't so knowing that, half of this list is like kind of slightly uninteresting. Mm-hmm. Saint Archippus. I don't remember this one. This is the one that's like a back for blood, left for dead, except in aliens, and it has a little bit of a like seventies oh, yeah. sci fi look. This looks kind of interesting. I'll watch someone play the this. The look <laughs> <laughs> Visually, it looks interesting because I love that 70s sci-fi or whatever that is. Yeah. But like the retro future sci-fi look is cool. But the aliens themselves, like they they like it looked really unpolished. Yeah, I'm not really interested. Yeah. There's al- so let's just there's also Payday 3, which they didn't talk about much about. But again, that's like a shooting, mm-hmm. shooting, shooting, looting, shooting and looting, shooting and wearing <laughs> clown masks. Right. Yeah. Um. I never actually played any Payday, and I, I have been pretty interested in doing that someday, but maybe not with you. Maybe that's a, other people, other friend group. So Payday 3, similar to St. Archippus, also Archippus. I'll, sh- I'll show. <laughs> also similar to Back for Blood. Yeah, well, we are interested in that. Which is the one of these that like I, I really do want to play because I liked it Left for Dead so much. Same. It was one of those like very few zombie games I was into. I mean, it was huge at the time. And I played a lot with my little brother and friends, and it was fun. I mean, yeah. it had its own thing going on for it, and uh, I'll definitely, I'm definitely interested in Back for Blood. I'm generally not interested in fast zombies, but somehow Left for Dead did it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Aren't they, they're fast in that, right? Or am I confusing? I mean, there's the types of them are fast. Like they run <laughs> at you, don't they? Or do they shamble? The witch does. Did the other zombies? I I'm gonna be real with you. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember. Kiwi. We've already talked about this one before. Yeah, I think we're definitely gonna do an episode on this one. Yeah. Ninety nine percent. It's never a hundred percent. That's a saves together certified banger. Right I would from say so. visual. You know, like <laughs> yeah, cute yeah, yeah. birds trying to make machines work. Teamwork yeah. and crew. Something rolling. unique, you know, when it comes to co op, so I I'm into it. The Rainbow Six. Here's another one. The Rainbow Six quarantine that they renamed to Extinction or something. Another of the shooting, shooting waves of enemies thing. Mm-hmm. Um, not interested. Yeah. <laughs> it uses the characters from Rainbow Six Siege, which I think is interesting. And I think lore wise stuff happened in Siege that now translates into this co-op mode, which is interesting to me. But not enough to make I, me. Play I've it. never played a Rainbow Six game. I'll be Siege real. Siege is great, uh, but the people that play it are too good. You hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I want to be the the goodest. I want to be the goodest also. <laughs> uh, it just sucks to get stomped all over. You know, like it does. It, it's like a it's weird catch twenty two because oh, you have this, you have this uh, player base that's really good, which means they love the game. It's kind of why I wasn't enjoying Battlefield when we played those right. big maps. It was just like I just keep dying. I mean. I've recently been replaying Battlefield because they showed Battlefield 2042 um, or 21, whatever it is. Which is the same amount of people you can have on the maps at the same time. Isn't that great? 2,142. I mean, it's, I think it's, (laughs) (laughs) 
I think it's 64 on 64, right? Yeah, 128, I think yeah. it was. But the trailer for that made me go back and play some five. And yeah, just getting constantly killed in a way that doesn't feel like you even know what's going on. Sucks. Right, right. It's not. Just but what do you do? Thing. I mean, that's the game. Like, what do you how yeah, do you make some people that... enjoy it? Some people don't. Yeah. Some people love to die, I guess. Or I guess some people are just determined enough to stick with it to the point where they won't die. Anymore. Right. Maybe it's <laughs> motivating to be like, I'm going to kill him next time. Yeah, right. I ain't got time for that. Next is Demon Throttle. And I, I actually have to look this up because I don't remember it. I don't remember that either. Oh. Oh. It's the uh, physical only. Is it physical only? Hold on. Oh, it's the demon throttling game. Where you throttle demons. Only physical, never digital. Okay, yeah. This is the one that at Devolver they showed. Oh. And it, it's a, it looks like a, a kind of bullet hell top-down shooter, so we're probably not going to play it. Wait, was this the one where he's like, the, the demon cowboy. took my wife? No, see, I think that was... Uh oh. <laughs> uh, Are you wait, sure? Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yes. This is why I wrote it down. Well, that demon took that my wife. No, it's kissed. Oh, that demon kissed my wife. Or something. Or something. Um, <laughs> that was funny. So I'm into that. Like, that's what sold me. This little... The, the, the image of when that happens in the trailer is like this pixel art, high, high detailed cowboy looking at me. I can't not appreciate the, you know, distinction of the fact that he kissed his wife and you then, the wife isn't taken out of the game. You can play as the wife in the co-op mode. So the uh, wife's part of the revenge instead of being the damsel in distress. I think the damsel, that's pretty good. The damsel that causes distress. Eh? Yeah. Damsel yeah. caused distress? Is I that mean, the, technically that the, the demon caused it. Well, no, she's going to distress people that with demon bullets. kissed my... Oh, yeah. Distressed demons with bullets. <laughs> distressed... Yeah. Anyway, it's a bad bit. I don't know so if we're I apologize play that. to everybody. <laughs> the one I thought you were talking about was Wizard with a Gun. Because that, that title <laughs> is the same type, type of stupid humor as that demon kissed my wife or something. You gotta love it. Um, Wizard with a Gun, another one. I don't know. Maybe we'll play these. I do sort of... that. Demon Throttle thing is intriguing to me for some reason. I don't know. Babylon's Fall. No. 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 Do you even know what that is? Oh, yes. This is the one that they, you know, this it had been hyped up for a while before. We oh, really this is saw... a Squeenix joint. Mm-hmm. Yes. It had been hyped up for a while before we actually saw gameplay, which during E3, and now it looks kind of janky. And it's like people are like, yeah, what happened up. in this game? What did we see before? What yeah, we this. didn't really get to see gameplay before. It so was like we were because, we had oh, high hopes because it was Square Enix, but then we platinum. saw the gameplay. Yes, and the and uh, it just looks a little like eh, eh you know. Yeah. I think we were disappointed. You really tried to question how much I knew about this game. I'm a little upset. I'm about shocked that. that you knew what it was because I have no idea what it is. It's because it was platinum and yeah. Square Enix, and, and I think we had a, we. I think it was more like we were hoping we better. Mm -hmm. I'm using the royal we here. The royal we. Anyway, Wii. I'm not super interested, but if it comes out in the, and everyone's like, this game is fun at least, then maybe we'll give it a shot. Speaking but. of the royal we, doesn't the queen have a gold-plated Nintendo Wii? <laughs> I don't know. Does she? I think so. <laughs> well, good for her, man. Contraband! This is Avalanche's next game, and they make cool open-world stuff. So um, I'm excited. All we got was like a... A, a tone piece mm -hmm. teaser trailer thing yeah i remember this it yeah. was like it's just a very short little thing but it's it, got that steely dan song that i realized like wait a minute maybe my dad was right steely dan's kind of cool i i think i i have hopes for it because it was like a co-op game and it, it yeah. seemed like it was focused on the co-op just based on what it was trying to market so maybe it will be a cool little thing we'll see we yeah, have I'm no hoping... gameplay so i don't want to say yes or no yet mad max the the car stuff was fun and like the open world stuff what? is pretty good. They I'm made a Mad Max about. game. And, oh oh oh! And the if this powers. has like the same, it, it it controlled well, right? Like it felt kinetic and fun. So like with a, with a name like Contraband, I'm assuming we're smuggling stuff. Maybe did you ever Most play Smuggler's likely. Run? No, those were some Rockstar games. I wish they'd make now. Modern mm. Smuggler's Run could be so cool. Grounded. They're updating it. They're adding mushrooms. It's not out yet, so I kind of think we should just keep waiting. Oh, well, it's an alpha, right? Like, people are playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's on Xbox now. You can play it, and but they're, you know, 
constantly changing and updating it. So I sort of want to wait till full release. Right. But I'm right. very excited because you know me. Being, I know you. Being you like small being in a small big world. In a big world. Ooh. <laughs> As we've heard from It Takes Two. Dying Light 2. Did mm. you ever play Dying Light 1? No, see, I don't like zombies. Unless it's Left 4 Dead, apparently. Yeah. This or is um Last of Us. I love the parkour so much that I'm very excited. I, I like that first game a lot. It's kind of like a kind of like a sleeper hit I don't remember that I loved so much. Mm -hmm. But then when I really think about it, I'm like, wait a minute, I loved that game. Yeah. So I'm excited. Redfall, worst named game at the show. What? What's even like worse a vampire than, one? Yeah. Even oh, worse than, well, this game looked really cool. Kind it looked of. really cool. At least the concept trailer did. Again, a tone piece, sort of. Yeah. Well, um, there's no gameplay. But it's it's probably a Left 4 Dead. Why but don't vampires. you like the name? Redfall. I but mean, what? it's not great, but it's what not like it terrible mean? either. Considering I knew what you were talking about, I yeah, think that's but better than it could Redfall. be. Redfall. I mean, I don't know. Babylon's Fall is probably worse, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but I just think it doesn't really tell you anything. It's like, what? I thought it was Red Wall, you know? Isn't that the the book series? That's the little mouse. <laughs> yeah. Little, big, little, little guy in a big world. Little mouse in a big house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see what that is and maybe play it. Depending. Depending. If it's like at night you fight zombies and then day you go out, a.k.a. what Fortnite was supposed to be before it became Fortnite, mm -hmm. I'll be excited. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We really don't have a lot of info as far as like gameplay yet, but it seems sort of like a, um, I don't know. I don't want to say like not Apex Legends, but one of those games where you like play as certain characters. What's and that game? Like powers. I'll be D Denji, Genji, Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Tracer. Yeah. I'm already Tracer. Remember that? Remember yeah, those I days? Do. That was that was the. Uh, wow. Those were the good days. Was it? Yeah. Instinction. I don't remember this one. It's like a dinosaur open world thing. And there was like three or four dinosaur games this year, which is pretty cool People for dinosaur maybe fans. maybe getting back in the dinos. I don't know. Uh, I think this one looked like an exploring, surviving, but also there's dinosaurs. So okay. Maybe it I'm, could be cool. I'm interested. I got to see more, though. You know? Yeah. Ruby. R-W-B-Y. Ruby. Oh, yes. Not interested. No. I don't good. even want to talk about it anymore. Moving on. Okay. But it's co-op. That's you know we had to we had, had to reference it. So the Ruby fans out there, I'm they probably already know. They probably they already, already know. They're like known this all is long. old news. We this already knew this was coming. I can't wait to be Ruby. I don't think we have any fans of and, Ruby on listen and, to podcast. And Blueberry. What are their names? I don't know. Who cares? River City Girls 2, one of the biggest announcements for the Saves Together. Yeah, because we've did the first one, which you should go back and listen to. Um, and we liked it, so like exactly. I'm really into a second one. Let's do it. I'm down. We didn't get any gameplay, but we're it was just like a I, little announcement. I'm willing so. to bet we can imagine it. I'm willing to you bet we can as well. And think about River City <laughs> Girls too. What might that look like? The same thing. I hope that it does more. Like, I'm sure it will. Like, uh, I'm sure it will. The music was also really good, so I hope we get yeah. another banging soundtrack. Monster Hunter Stories. Now, do we know anything about what the co-op is? Is it, it sounds just... like it's going to be missions that are separate from the main game. So like it sounds raids. like you might need to have your own game to do that. Yeah. So. Also, I'm not that interested. Probably won't happen. Yeah. I will say. And lastly, on my list here, and you can let me know if you have anything else. WarioWare. They announced a new WarioWare. Yes. And it's co-op. And that's the whole shtick. That isn't the whole shtick, but it is a part of the shtick. I, well, I would say half the shtick. It's, it's the shtick the is shtick. that you get to be... All the other characters too, I see, I see. and be in their worlds. It looks really cute and fun, and I'm excited for it. But yeah, they did prominently feature a co-op mode, so that's exciting. And mm. I, we, we both love Warrior Wear. Warrior Wear is a good video game. Such that's a one fun of those ones you can give to anybody. Game. Pizza yeah. party game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see how we'll see how that one. That's most likely going to be a, an episode, I would say. Yeah, I'm excited um, for that one. So, did you have any other co-op games that I didn't write down on my list? I'm surprised you didn't write down the Diablo 2 remaster. Oh. I I, me too, actually. And I wanted to talk I about that. Because I kind of wanted to, tr to play it. <laughs> yeah. So I almost, I was looking into it last night. I was like, wait, are we playing this or not? I'm down. Is it local? Do you know? If it's same screen, it'll make things a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I think that will, that will very much determine whether that's, that happens. Yeah. So, or if, we'll if it's on Switch. So here's my thing. I don't know if I want it on Switch. Because no, 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 no. Definitely not. It's one of those things where it like, it looks so good. It's one of that overdone phrase of it looks like how you remember it. You know? Yeah, right, right, right. Totally. So I, I want to see it in as m the best visual quality we can. So like PS5 or Xbox Series X. 
So that's what, that's what I'm hoping for. It's on one of those and it's local. That would be, that would be, a, I, would, I would at least give it a shot because I, I enjoyed some of Diablo 3. I just felt a little rushed through the story. So with Diablo 3, I, that's a much more recent game for me. So when we played, especially. Yeah. Like I had just yeah, finished right, playing right, through right. it and then you wanted to play through it together. And it was like, I was just not into seeing the story again. So with Diablo 2, sure, I've played it before, but first of all, I was a kid, so I don't remember it. Right. You know, so I'm excited. Dibs on Necromancer. And then we played two games that I don't remember seeing trailers for, but had demos released on Xbox oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Game Pass. I think the Xbox Showcase, by the time you're listening to this, the demos are done. But uh-huh. they had a summer demo fest or whatever. And the first one of those was a game by Natsume, published by Natsume, um, Connect Tank. And it was really, really fun. We played the demo. We were really surprised because it... I mean, we just downloaded these without watching a trailer. Just he, you know. I saw the word co-op and I said, "All right, let's try it." Looks looks weird. It was a a little co-op tank um, game where you essentially like build the pathway for the bullets that come out of your tank to travel down, and then you spend time crafting bullets of certain colors to appropriately like attack the other tank that you're yeah, fighting. It's got like- and and it, it's got a little bit of an adventure mode where you like build your tank up with new bullets and new parts. And I think it's a roguelite. Where you do a run so. and then you die, you know. It's actually really fun. I'm I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. And it had like no <laughs> very little coverage. So yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere. I'm glad we stumbled across it. Yeah, so almost I'm like gonna indivisible. Be watching it now. A lot more people talked about indivisible, and right? I just indivisible it. was huge. But we stumbled across that one and ended up loving it. And this, so far from the demo, feels like that. This is why demos are so great. I've been really into demos these days. That especially. Start from the beginning of the story and let you carry on your progress. I, I just mm-hmm. played the demo for Monster Hunter Stories 2. Was not sold on that game before, but then I played the demo and I was like, all right, I'll keep playing. Like, I'll buy it. Like, it's it's actually really fun and I'm excited. Yeah. So demos are awesome to have. And that that definitely sold me on Connect Tank. So we're going to I do want to do an, an episode on that if it comes to I think it's coming to PC first in, in on, on August 10th. So if you want to check it out there, but I would like to wait until it's on the console. It's not going to be on Xbox the same day? But I don't it had a demo on the Xbox. I'm not like, sure. I'll have to check because okay. that's what I saw online. Do you want me to look it up really no, quick? No, it's fine. And then the other game we played that I don't necessarily need to do a show on was Mad Streets. You need to play Mad Streets. <laughs> Write this I down. cried laughing playing this game. <laughs> it just didn't expect it. It's very Gang Beasts-like uh, combat. It's just super goofy. Like we played through like a it felt like a party mode almost where we were these teen boys that were beating other teen boys up the and jocks. you could pick up objects. Yeah, that we but we also look like jocks. No, we look like <laughs> delinquents. We look like punks. Yeah, we did look like delinquents. And it was just really funny. I don't know why I was just laughing and laughing and laughing. I also we did a we did a little versus match and he could not Craig could not beat me and I thought that was I couldn't even hit you funny. man you cheated with that OPS <laughs> box though that's the problem I just kept shoving a box in his face I don't know it's, it, was it was really fun so funny now I don't know how <laughs> long of legs that thing has we should maybe give it a shot because I, I think d- it could I'm be a fun it, party I, game yeah exactly like it was so, fun. yeah, it's it's kind of shocking to me that the most fun co-op game experience we had during E3 was two games that didn't even show up <laughs> I know. E3 and that we're just on like the whatever this Xbox demo thing was. So that really shows you it's good to just try random demos. But here's know? the thing, Steam also did Steam Next Fest, a demo event. It's harder for they me to 1, like They had 1000 games on there. It's just so much. Yeah, see, that's too much. Yeah. It really is <laughs> What do they call it when there's too many choices and you are frozen and you uh, can't make a decision? Analysis paralysis. Is that really what it's called? Or you're just rhyming together? Or decision paralysis or whatever. Yes. It's, it's where you... Yeah. No, Nothing I'm, is outstandingly interesting, so you can't decide. It's all equally interesting, mm-hmm. so then you just don't do any of it. And that's not to say, like, well, you should limit who gets a demo, because that's bullshit. Like, I don't want that either. Uh, but when it comes to the PC but, especially, I'm not going to sit here and download a thousand demos. And also, maybe I'm not even going to download one demo. For some on, reason, sitting on my couch with a console, like... I'm much more likely to to play something there. But that's also because I'm just not a PC gamer. So I'm yeah. sure people who are really into Steam have played a bunch of demos. But but having a thousand and trying to sort... The thing that I liked about the Xbox One is I just went down the list and there were maybe 45 games and I looked at every single one and it took mm-hmm. me about 10 minutes and that's all. Yeah, I, I think tried that's to do that amount. on Steam and I'm sorry, if I go through 400 games and only one of them looks interesting to me, I, I know it's just a me thing, 
But maybe they should try to separate them by like genre yeah. or something. I don't and they know. might have, and I just was doing it wrong. But I wanted to see everything because I don't really have a specific genre. Mm-hmm. I don't love, you know, necessarily specific genres. But I don't know. It was too much, way too much stuff. Yeah. And just, you know, this is what's interesting about this medium. There's too much. But that's okay. No, no, no. It's not. There's too much of books, too, you know? Yes. And it's like you learn to know what's good for you. You but can't keep up with bad. everything. I can't keep up with every book that gets published. There's absolutely no way. Right. I just have to stumble upon them or read about them or, you know, I get there. And you shouldn't feel bad. Right. Because at the end of the day, you you see what you see, you play I what you play. I feel bad, though, because I'm... I'm Constantly thinking, well, there might be a weird one. There might be one I love in here. Because I'm okay oh. with smaller stuff. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't Grass know is to... always greener on the other side. You can't you can't sit there and think about too long for about what you're missing out, you know? Because I bet you'll find things you love eventually. And that's all that matters. Um, At the very least, I, I'm trying these days to spend less time with things I'm I'm not loving. And I've had that problem before where I've been playing games to the end that I wasn't super into just to beat them because I love that sense of completion. Same thing with books. It's like I need to stop reading books when halfway through I'm not enjoying it. I mean, sometimes I will because it's um, educational to me as a writer, like what I'm not liking. But with games, I really don't need to do that. So Right. Same thing with anime. You know, we're trying to do the thing where we're not watching every anime we start to the end. It's like if we're just like not even looking forward to it, why keep doing it when there's so much out there to do? Right. When so. I get the little alert that a new episode's out and I'm not and I swipe it immediately like, ugh, I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. Why am I watching then, it then? Then it's not fun. Yeah. And maybe you'll watch it one day and that's always open to you. But if you're not like looking forward to it, then don't do it. That's that's really what I think, especially when there's just so much that we enjoy. Like, right. if you're only in anime, then yeah, you probably are watching everything. But we're into a lot of stuff, so I ain't got no time for things that aren't that fun for me. And speaking about no time for things, we've got no more time for this episode. We don't. So let's uh, head to the closing segment and get on out of here. Okay, so usually we do a buried treasure indie game highlight of the week of the month, but uh, the whole episode was kind of that. So many buried treasures. I would say the biggest buried treasure is Connect Tank. So Connect please Tank. go look them up on Twitter because they Connect. only have like they had like twenty seven followers. Connect Tank. Connect, but only Tank. one T. Um, check it out. Yeah, it looks um, really good. So it, great. it's legitimately good. Like the art was really good. Everything that about was it was what good. was shocking to me. Yeah. Finding out it was Natsume. And and being like, wait, well, they just published they? it. They didn't no, develop know, but, it, but still, and it, and like, yeah, the art's good, and the it it was kind of shocking compared to some of the other stuff I played. During it's a that, very you know? fun co-op game. It's not too hard, uh, and I like that it has kind of like a crew rolls. So yeah, we far, split so. up, so you can both do anything. Yeah, but we split up like because I'm just dumb, so I have to have less tasks. The so. developers are Yummy Yummy Tummy, ooh, and Tomatin Entertainment. I just want to say, good. Um, go check them out. Follow them because yeah, like you said, they're... that's my buried treasure of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, Grace, could you please tell me where we can tell them to find us on the internet? Check us out at SavesTogether.club, where you can find links to our social media and our episodes, and you can also get a rundown of our co-op factors and categories. And you can also follow us over on Twitter and Instagram at Saves Together. At Saves Together. That's it. That's it. See you next year <laughs> for Easter, 2022. Everybody. I had a good time, at least. I don't know. It was definitely overwhelming. I saw some but good stuff. I had a good time. I'm excited for EA's thing. Oh, I didn't even talk about that. Skate 4. If it's not there, uh, if it's not there, you're going to hear me yell about it on this next episode. So It'll be there. They've got to. They've it has to be. At least know, like continue. something. At least like a small update. It's a little skateboard that rolls by the screen or something. And it's like, there it was! Exactly. I'm standing. <laughs> yeah! Oh, wait. What did I stand for? There was one thing at E3 that I stood up for. I really don't remember Captain Jack oh, it was Sparrow. <laughs> about that dude and the amount of pushback the amount of people who are like so grossed out by that it's like dude what is wrong with you this is the the pirate adventure to end all pirate adventures upside down boats and to be fair like pirates of caribbean has does not it's not had its moment its moment is way over and bring it back (laughs) baby i'm just not really surprised that people would be like what the hell is this i think it's incredible i cannot wait I don't even need to dress like Captain Jack Sparrow. I just want to like be around him. Mm-hmm. I hope I can be on his boat. Can we get the Black Pearl? Oh, I can't wait. I haven't even started yet. Oh, I'm so excited. Goodbye. I'm going to go play that. Bye.